Okay, now let's start to wrap up our Taylor series expansion videos by looking at one last function that we're going to expand, the binomial series. But before we actually start to talk about the binomial series, I think it's best if we just do a brief little review on the binomial theorem. Now, the binomial theorem says that if you have something of the form a plus b raised, all raised to the p power, where p is a positive integer, then the theorem says that we can expand it out using our handy dandy formula, in which case all this expanded out is going to be a raised to the p power plus p times a to the p minus 1 power times b, or b to the first power if you will, plus p times p minus 1 over 2 factorial times a to the p minus 2 power times b squared plus p times p minus 1 times p minus 2 over 3 factorial times a to the p minus 3 power times b cubed and this is going to go on and on uh, with each term the exponent in the a, uh, the a part is going to go down one and the exponent in the b part is going to go up one so eventually you'll reach plus b to the p power. Now two quick things that I want to point out. Uh, the first that if you look at every single term you can add the exponent on the a part and the b part and if you add them together you'll notice that they add up to p each and every time for each and every term. The other thing that I want to point out is that if you look at the coefficients of each term, they look fairly complicated and intimidating, but there's a bit of a pattern to it. These coefficients have a special name. They're called binomial coefficients, and they can be rewritten with this form here. p factorial divided by n factorial times p minus n factorial where our p term, that was just our exponent, and our n term is actually just what term in the expansion we're, we're working with. So this would be the n is 0 term, the n equals 1 term, the n equals 2 term, and so on. So just to really show like how we get these coefficients from this formula, let's just do a couple examples. So for the case where n is equal to 0, the 0th coefficient will be p factorial divided by 0 factorial times p minus 0, which is just going to be p factorial. Now 0 factorial, that's just 1, and the p factorials will cancel, so we're going to get that our first coefficient is 1, which is exactly what we had up here. Now let's look at the case where n is equal to 1. We get that our coefficient is p factorial over 1 factorial times p minus 1 factorial. Now, 1 factorial is still 1, but we can simplify this up a bit by rewriting p factorial as p times p minus 1 factorial all over p minus 1 factorial. The p minus 1 factorials cancel, and we're left with p. Oops, there we go which was our second term in the series. Now, let's, just to really drive this home, let's take a look at where n is equal to 2. Our coefficient is given by p factorial over 2 factorial times p minus 2 factorial. Now, we can simplify this by rewriting p factorial as p times p minus 1 times p minus 2 factorial all over 2 factorial times p minus 2 factorial. So the p minus 2 factorials cancel, and we're left with p times p minus 1 over 2 factorial, which is exactly what we had up here. And obviously this pattern continues with more terms. Now, just one quick thing, you can rewrite this fraction in a kind of shorthand notation. You can typically see this as, um, just write it out here, um, you can typically see it as parentheses p over n. No bar or anything there. This is just shorthand representing this fraction here. And the way we typically say this out is we say this is p choose n. Okay, so now with all this in mind, 
let's start working on our binomial series. So the function we're going to be looking at is f of x is equal to parentheses 1 plus x to the p power. Now, you may notice a couple obvious differences. Instead of dealing with a, we have 1. Instead of dealing with x, we, sorry, with b, we have x. Now, the most important difference, though, is that p is now no longer restricted to being a positive integer. p can be positive or negative, and it can be an integer or a fraction. So, we're going to do our Maclaurin series expansion with this function. So, we know what to do. We're just going to take a bunch of derivatives and evaluate them at zero and plug them in. So, let's do the first derivative. We have f prime of x is equal to... We multiply by the exponent p, so we have 1 plus x, now to the p minus 1 power, and now we do the chain rule by multiplying by the derivative of the inside, but the derivative of the inside is just 1. So we can carry on and do the second derivative, that's f double prime of x. That's going to be we're going to multiply by the p minus 1 exponent now, so we're going to get p times p minus 1 times 1 plus x, now to the p minus 2 power. And let's just do the third derivative, f triple prime. That's p times p minus 1 times p minus 2 times 1 plus x, now to the p minus 3 power. So now let's evaluate these at 0 and plug them in. So we can say that our approximation is equal to, uh, let's change the colors, uh, f tilde of x, that's equal to our function at 0, so 1 plus 0 to the p power, plus x over 1 factorial times our first derivative at 0, which is p times 1 plus 0 to the p power, or p minus 1 power, plus now, I'm just going to write it down here, our x squared over 2 factorial times the second derivative evaluated at 0, which is p times p minus 1 times 1 plus 0 to the p minus 2 power, plus x cubed over 3 factorial times p times p minus 1 times p minus 2 times 1 plus 0 to the p minus 3 power. And that will go on and on. We have more and more terms. Let's try and simplify what we have here. Um, here we have 1 plus 0 raised to some power, like p, p minus 1, p minus 2, etc. But 1 plus 0 is just 1, and 1 raised to any power is still going to be 1. So we can replace all these 1 plus zeros to whatever power was just 1. And now let's rewrite it and try and see if we can find the pattern. So this is equal to 1 plus p times x oops, p times x plus p times p minus 1 times x squared over 2 factorial so p oops, times p minus 1 over 2 factorial times x squared plus b times p minus 1 times p minus 2 over 3 factorial times x cubed and so on. Now this should hopefully look a bit familiar. We should hopefully be able to recognize these coefficients. These are our binomial coefficients. So we can rewrite the series as p choose 0 to the x to the 0 power plus p choose 1 times the x to the first power plus p choose 2 times x squared plus p choose 3 times x cubed and so on. So I think it's fairly obvious what our series should be. We can rewrite our function 1 plus x to the p power as the sum from n is equal to 0 to infinity of p choose n times x to the n.
or we can even rewrite it if you want using a fractional like factorial term so the sum of n is equal to 0 to infinity of p factorial over n factorial times n minus p factorial all times x to the n now you may be saying okay this is supposed to be similar to our binomial theorem but with our binomial theorem when p was a positive integer we had a finite series it ended but here you're saying that we have an infinite series what's the deal well this is the most general case so when p is a positive integer this series will terminate it will not go to infinity and we'll see an example in the next video but this case also can like describe cases where p is a negative or when p is a fraction and in those cases we will have an infinite sum so th this is the most general expression i guess you could say for our binomial series so while we're at it let's just check the convergence of this with a ratio test we know that the ratio test that's defining rho as the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of n. Term in the series was the index n plus 1 divided by the term in the series was index n. And we know that the series will converge when rho is less than 1. So let's just plug it out and see what we get. In this case, our rho is going to be equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of, let's do the n, n plus 1 uh, term, so we're going to look at this expression and replace n plus 1 every time we see n. So this is going to be p factorial times x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial times p minus parentheses n plus 1. We have to remember to distribute out this minus sign factorial. Now we're dividing that by this term with, with the index n. So we can just multiply by the inverse. So that's going to be n factorial times p minus n factorial over p factorial times x to the n. And that's all absolute value. Now, before we really simplify this, well, uh, before we re rewrite this, I should say, we can immediately simplify by crossing off the p factorial in the top and bottom. And we can try and line this up properly to make simplifying easier. So let's say this is equal to n plus 1, sorry, x to the n plus 1 over x to the n times n factorial over n plus 1 factorial times p minus n factorial over p minus n minus 1 factorial, distributing out the negative sign. Now, should be easy to, well, relatively easy to simplify this. Uh, we can rewrite it as the limit as n approaches infinity of x to the n plus 1 over x to the n, that's just x. We can rewrite n plus 1 factorial as n plus 1 times n factorial, so the two n factorials will cancel, and we're left with n plus 1 on the denominator. And we can rewrite p minus n factorial as p minus n times p minus n minus 1 factorial, so the p minus n minus 1 terms will cancel, and we're left with p minus n in the numerator. Now, before we actually take the limit, let's just simplify this up a bit more and divide by n on the numerator and the denominator. So this is the limit as n approaches infinity of x times p divided by n minus 1 over 1 plus 1 over n. Now, this is pretty simple to take the limit when n goes to infinity this p over n term and this 1 over n term will go to 0, which means we're left with x times negative 1 divided by 1, but since we're dealing with absolute value, that this is all just going to become x. So our rho is equal to x, which means that 
this series will converge uh, this series here will converge to this value only when x is less than 1 so we do have like a bit of a criteria for convergence but if you notice it doesn't matter what exponent we had what exponent p so as long as x is uh, less than 1 then this series will converge for any p for any p any value of p or any value of our exponent which is fairly handy now we're going to take a look at a couple like examples and applications of this in the next video